happy with their behaviors. We don't have a problem with any of our artists. Yeah. You know, everyone is who they are. And we, and we are not in the business as a record label uh, to shape people into who they are not. We are in the business to guide their music careers and how to make the best business decisions around music and their lives. But also we have boundaries. They are still their, their own human beings. And we are very respectful of that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so. okay it's the 28th uh, Rust and Ride. Yes. And, uh, it's a reggae raga nyam nyam. Yes. Yes, uh, let's first go brief into that, uh, the theme and the lineup tonight. Um, so this is uh, one of those most exciting editions of Rose and Rhyme, supported by Beolaga every February into March, either the first weekend of March or last weekend of February. We gather at the Jahazi Pyre and just have a celebration. Uh, just have a, you know, a good party with friends by the lakeside. And that's what Rosa Rosa has been doing for the last nine years. Yeah, so every February we are here and October. Then in June, in June we go up country. We we'll go to Ginger, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, still again this time we're going to go to Ginger? We shall go to Ginger in June, yes. yes. Okay. When well, look at the uh, lineup, we sing uh, uh, Viper Ranking, we sing uh, uh, Double Black, we sing Awake uh, Band, we sing Cindy, we sing uh, King Michael. Yes. Uh, why do we come with a, a selection of... Uh, so uh, when you look at the lineup for this year's edition, Reggae Raga Nyam Nyam, it's heavily dancehall, it's heavily purely dancehall artists. You look at King Michael, you look at uh, uh, Cindy, you look at uh, Viper Ranking, very, very dancehall. You look at Abeka's uh, performance that we've just watched, awesome, powerful reggae performance. Uh, you look at what Double Black is doing, pure reggae raga dancehall festival. Yep. Okay. Um, it's like as if um, with uh, this kind, uh, it's uh, only one uh, festival we're facing uh, this year in, year out, and it's purely Uganda. Um, and you st got stuck on that. So, when uh, when we created Ross and Rhyme as a property at Swangs Avenue, so one of the property that celebrates and builds uh, Ugandan music. So that's why you never see a foreign act, or you, you've never seen a foreign performer at Ross and Rhyme. You purely see Ugandan artists. Shall we at some point have foreign artists on stage? Maybe yes, uh, but we, we mu it must be in the service of building Ugandan music. So if we are to bring a foreign artist, it has to be in the service of building Ugandan music. And that's what Rosam Rhyme is about. Uh, some people are getting thirsty of uh, having uh, Grace Nachimela on stage one time. Because uh, she's among the first ever artists that has ever been signed by uh, uh, Swang. At uh, what time do we see Grace Nachimela appearing on a Rosa and uh, So first, the artists that perform at Rosa and Rhyme are not a sign of artists. Anyone can perform. And what makes it unique, uh, Rosa and Rhyme, you don't even have to have a hit song. Like, we are not looking for someone who has a big song. No, we are looking for that artist who will give people a good experience. So that's why you find a person like King Michael is not a training artist. Uh, you find an artist like Maddox performer at Reggae Raga. He doesn't have a hit song right now, but we know it will give our revelers the, the experience that we want them to, 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 to witness and be a part of when they come for us and rhyme. It's a Reggae Raga, and uh, we know when uh, um, Morgan Heritage were here, and uh, that was uh, 2017. You were involved. Yes. A uh, guy uh, just recently, Peter uh, Pastor. Uh, yeah. Your condolences, and uh, what you remember, because uh, you are among the organizers of uh, Morgan Heritage in 2017. Yeah, um, it's very sad. Um, may the good Lord rest his soul in peace. Peter passed a few days away. Uh, I personally, I'd, gotten, I'd become friends with the family. We've actually been trying to do a show with Morgan Heritage in Ghana, one of, uh, one of our branches in Ghana. Uh, and those conversions have been ongoing, but you know, it was such a sudden, and I don't think he was even sick for so long, uh, because they've been having long-term conversations for different shows and different partnerships. Uh, but it's sad. It's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, may God uh, rest him in peace. Yeah. Um, it's okay if we talk about the spraying of wings of Aswangs Avenue. Uh, uh, last said uh, you guys are in Ghana now. We've had. Uh, uh, we have in Tanzania. We. Um, how many countries are we in right now at Swangs? So, uh, we are moving at Swangs and, and a couple of other subsidiaries, other groups of businesses that we do, that we run in the creative industry. Uh, and collectively now we are in four countries. Um, it's, it's just us expanding, trying to you know, do what we've done in Uganda and see if we can take it to another market. Uh, and soon there will be some exciting new announcements. 
in terms of you know artists that we'll be working with uh, in the different markets. Yeah, we're really cooking up some exciting stuff. Assassin in Ghana, we are in Ghana, and we know uh, when we talk about uh, acting and music, uh, uh, the focus is always uh, coming from Ghana. Then it's praise somewhere else. Are we seeing uh, this year any collaborations? Because I was talking with Azawi, it was an interview, and she told me with uh, Adela she's doing. You guys are connecting her to the Ghanaian audience. Um, yes, there's a lot of work happening in the background. I might not be able to give you all the information, but we'll make appropriate announcements when, when that stuff is available uh, or whenever we are ready to do that. But yes, there's quite a bit that we are doing with a lot of the talent we have in the different markets, uh, but also uh, uh, potential possible collaborations across the markets. Uh, and we'll make announcements. We have a couple of artists in the different markets that are under development. Before we announce an artist, we've worked with them prepare them, groom them, get, get them ready for release. So we have a couple of, of talent across the different markets. Yeah. When we talk about uh, Ugandan music and uh, being a, a label that has uh, 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 been able to contain the Ugandan uh, industry to say that uh, it goes somewhere, uh, you as Swans have a new leader and uh, a, a, a label that has contained it. Um, where do we see now our music with uh, these corporate issues, uh, uh, people fighting their names, uh, money getting in, uh, people don't understand it. Where, how can you gauge our industry? Uh, okay, I, I hear a lot of people complain about this and that about the industry, but one thing is for sure, the industry is at a place it has never been before. There's more money, there are more opportunities, the things that the industry is able to do and see the potential now. Yes, are, are we happy? Can we do better? Yes, we are not happy. There are things that could have been better. But don't get it wrong, this is the best time to be a musician. Musicians, the kind of money they are making now, their peers before didn't make it. The level of distribution they're able to access, their peers did not get it. And, and, and you see this in every African country you go to. Everyone complains about copyright and all that. But copyright does, will still not help you if you don't have music. Even if that law is made in a way that favors you, you still must have a powerful product to sell to people. People must want to consume it. You can't be screaming copyright, copyright but you're not even creating a product that needs to be protected. So sometimes I feel people are worried about the wrong things and not focusing on you know, what is the most crucial thing. And I'm not saying the fight ar around copyright is, is a waste of time. No, that's not what I'm saying. Because there's actually the law, the law is in place. But we are not also doing enough as creatives uh, uh, to make use of the law. So I, I feel we need to do a, a bit more at that front. Yeah. Uh, there's an issue of a split sheet. People are fighting for copyright. But if you go in the studios and the artists are not ready to uh, to give in those who have put in enough work or effort on their songs, and people are fighting for copyright, is it a right if we don't have a split sheet in studios and the artists themselves are fighting for a copyright? Uh, I think there's a lot of ignorance in most of these conversations. Uh, but we shall learn. You know, most of these things are new to most of us, but there are new ways of work that are, are the entire industry globally is practicing and we must adopt. Things like split sheets. Every studio needs to have one. Or if you don't have one, everyone must have a team, a management team that understands this language, that can deploy lawyers and make sure they, they are solid contracts in place. We must adopt, or if you don't do that, then your chances to prosper or make money for music, you know, maybe small. Okay, you were the pioneer founder of, uh, you were the first president of Wauma. Before it was uh, Ugandan music, uh, there was uh, an additional uh, something there. Um, and uh, what we're seeing, uh, is Wuma still on the right track when you guys were starting as a pioneer president? Um, is, it, is Wuma still on the right track? Yeah. I think they've done a lot uh, for especially leading creative I think is one of the most <laughs> stressful or, or, or unpredictable ventures you can ever take on so I don't want to be and start criticizing the leadership and what they've done because it's difficult it's already hard and they've done something and they've tried you know and and I'm proud of what they've done uh, because these guys have done what I couldn't do this long so if I start criticizing them it's very hypocritical yeah I, I mean I I quit. I didn't fit. I, I, I didn't finish. I, did, I couldn't keep up. I had other demands on, on you know, my business side, on my family side, and I was honest with myself. And I said, you know what? Let me pass on this to someone else who can carry the cross. So they are very bored. They did it. They took it on, and I'm grateful for that. 
Chaz on a lighter tone, on a lighter note, uh, what made, in, made you throw in that away? Um, so, in the beginning, I'd never asked to be a leader of the association. Um, the artist, you know, my name was put in the heart, and people like Mose Radio pushed so hard, and they, so I was like, you know what, this benefits all of us. So if, if, if my colleagues think, you know, I'm the person to lead them, uh, yeah, why not? So I gave it a shot. Uh, but I, I, I made a miscalculation in terms of my time allocation. Uh, so I thought it's something you run the way you'd run, like a village meeting or, 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 or a wedding meeting, you know, a group of creatives. So, you know, you meet once a month, you know, look through the activities you've done. So that's the kind of uh, mindset I had when I said yes. But I quickly realized that that mindset can't progress the industry or you have to make the time. So quickly, the decision was very clear. Do I have the time? to service the association, or am I going to shortchange it by putting it on the back burner? And I think I believe I did what was right for the association. My last one or two questions is about uh, AI. Uh, we're seeing AI at the moment is uh, penetrating the industry, and uh, I believe uh, uh, Swang Zaven is one of the, it's right now affected. With uh, um, Azawi song, uh, Bring On On uh, uh, radio, the late radio, Moses' uh, voice. Uh, are we benefiting from the AI thing and you who have, it has affected you already? How do you see the AI? Um, frankly, even as a business at Swangs Avenue, we are pro AI. Like, there's a lot of stuff we are doing. People don't even realize we've been using AI for a long time. Um, there's another video I think we did last year. It has Bob Dwayne and Shiba that are clearly cloned. It's not them. Uh, our even production practices, you know, we borrow tools. We, we are very pro AI as a business. Uh, so we monitor it and see, okay, how is AI going to help us? How can it potentially affect us? But how can we make best use of it? You look at the issue with Azawi, the thing you're talking about, Masavu, the remix. We don't, it depends on who you ask, but we actually don't think it's a problem. Because we own the copyright, it's our song. So if you make 10 other versions and we are still getting paid, we don't have a problem with that. However, the danger is, if we don't like it, you're still breaking the law because you need, our, you need permission. Well, if it works out, we have a decision. You know, we still make money if someone messes up with our song and makes a different version. We still own the content ID, so we still get paid either way. So the choice is, do we like it? Do we like the song? Don't we like the song? But the fact is, the law, by law, you must get consent. Yeah, you have to come and ask the owner of the copyright if you want to do a remix. Uh, and in this case, this young man didn't. Yeah, but... And we saw the thread on the uh, internet everywhere. The thread was uh, uh, from up to down, down to up. And, uh, uh, somewhere we saw Azawi and uh, Weasel like, jumping into that thread. And that's, uh, well, there's a statement that Weasel said, should we the demo, original demo, or to be like, I'm like, as if he was saying, it's not AI, the song is ours. So, um, it's all marketing. It works. It did work. Uh, okay. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> you know, uh, Masavu, think about Masavu. The times of Mose, no one was saying Masavu. It's been street lingo. So, I mean, but it works. The conversations worked. Yeah, everyone has been talking about the song. Okay. Song is number one on every streaming platform. Okay. So we need some more people maybe to come mess it up more. Or make some funny some funny claims. Yeah. One last gap. Yeah. Only one like this. Okay. About Winnie Nwaji. Yeah. Everyone has been looking for you about uh, for you to comment about uh, Winnie Nwaji's uh, behavior, the way the rumors have been coming out there and uh, day in, day out. Uh, she soon be chased out of a uh, uh, swans, and we were looking for chance to clarify because with the boss, with the talk, is Winnie Nwaji. What, 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 what do you mean when you say Winnie Nwaji's behavior? Uh, everyone is, was commenting, uh, everyone is commenting, beating, you know, uh, shouting at people, uh, the abuse of uh, statements and everything. Well, what is the question? The question is, are you guys contented with her and uh, is she stable with you guys? Because uh, if the internet has been uh, all, all, up all, and down all the, she's all the artists at Swangs 
for as long as you have a running contract, which means you're happy with us and we're happy with you. The day you're not happy with us, you can terminate. The day you're not happy with you, you can terminate. So until when we make an announcement that we are not happy with one of our artists, I think you can always assume we are happy with all our artists. Yeah. So you're happy with happy happy We don't have a problem with any of our artists. Yeah. Thank you very much. And we think, you know, everyone is who they are. And we, and we are not in the business as a record label uh, to shape people into who they are not. We are in the business to guide their music careers and how to make the best business decisions around music and their lives. But also we have boundaries. They are still their, their own human beings. And we are very respectful of that. Thank you very much. You're welcome.